um, what probably no one here needs to be told, that Wayne Michaels is one of our most influential artists and a key figure in the history of photography in the past half century. That's the best you can do. That's, 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 it. that's all you need. Okay. Um, no, already in the 1960s, he was experimenting with combining images with texts and assembling images in series to convey narratives, which took on sometimes weighty topics, but always with a light touch. In 1970, he was recognized by a show at MoMA, which at that time was committed to icons of modern photography like Diane Arbus and Gary Winogrand, and published his book Sequences, which introduced an entire generation of young artists to the conceptual and narrative possibilities of photography. His extraordinarily influential career was celebrated in a 2014 traveling retrospective titled Storyteller, which was organized by the Carnegie Museum of Art in uh, Duane's hometown of Pittsburgh. Um, I had the pleasure of working with Duane and a marvelous designer, Mark Melnick, who's responsible for this book, at the time of that show to create a book that would illuminate Duane's biography in a playful way, and it's titled ABC Duane. Recommend it to everybody. Um, and we probably shouldn't have been surprised by the attention that the book received. Time Magazine chose it as one of their top photo books of 2014. Working on that project, I realized there was another side of Duane's achievement, a remarkable body of work that firmly establishes him as one of the most creative portrait photographers, editorial portrait photographers in the post-war era. So, <clears throat> with Mark Melnick, again, lending his design, and with Josiah Cuneo, uh, um, Duane's, uh, <laughs> Duane's everything, Duane's creative enabler, studio manager, and so on, uh, we made this book, and so we're here tonight to celebrate it. Parole officer. <laughs> um, trained, as a, trained as a graphic designer. Uh, Duane came out of the same uh, school, if you will, as many of the influential artists and photographers of the 50s and 60s, that is, the great picture magazine tradition of <clears throat> Vogue, Esquire, Life, Mademoiselle, all of which published portraits by Duane. Um, but unlike so many of the photographers of that era, Duane never settled on a look. And I wonder, Duane, if you can talk a little bit about your approach and how different it is from some of the uh, familiar faces in that world. Is this an intervention? <laughs> I think this is an intervention. This is a collusion, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I guess, hmm, therefore I am. No. Uh, <laughs> I, I think each person should be a different portrait. Uh, most photographers come up with a signature smile, style. <laughs> it rhymes, I guess. But, um, and I think each person should be a different solution. Rather than putting your, your signature style on the person, it, it shouldn't be you know, a portrait of Tennessee Williams. Uh, it shouldn't be, I, I'll make up a fictitious fictitious name not to intimidate myself or get arrested, but or hit, or hit. No, but it shouldn't be a, a Francis Ernk portrait of Tennessee Williams. It should be Tennessee Williams photographed by Francis Ernk. So, if Francis, if you're here, I don't mean to insult you, but I think each person is a different personality, so why put a stamp on them? And I, I hate studios, although I do studios, but that's not the story. But I, <laughs> I amuse myself all the time. Not as much as when I was younger, but that's another story too. <laughs> but anyway, it, like it's yeah, yeah, well, nothing. Well, what, 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 yeah, well, I mean, the, 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 oh, no, it's me. The, the, <laughs> all right. The striking thing here is that you draw no bright line between your creative work and your editorial work. It's all part of the same yeah. creative imagination. No, but I, the essential thing is, I think every pers person should be a different portrait because. No two people have the same issue. And I love going to locations. Like when I went to visit with McGree, I'm name dropping. Uh, that was amazing. Oh, can you imagine going to McGree's house and looking in their drawers where they keep their underwear? And you, oh, you'd be so amazed. 
I didn't show you those pictures. Anyway, uh, no, I love going to locations. I like making discoveries. I like, you know, and then, and then I like the, the, the confront, not confrontation, but I like working with somebody and having this, this uh, exchange that goes on. Sometimes nothing to exchange, you know. Is Ivanka here? No, I never. <laughs> anyway, what we're talking, yeah. And you said you're looking to be surprised. Say it again. Surprised. Surprised. I love surprise. I'm surprising myself. I'm surprised you're still here. No, but I love surprise. <laughs> I, I hate predictability. I really do hate predictability. I like doing whatever I've done before. And when you have a studio environment, you set up the lights and you take the same picture over and over. And you know what I really dislike? No, see if you can guess what I really, no. I hate headshots and ad nauseum, you know, the standing picture face. Book, I saw a book once with page after page of, what the fuck is that? I mean, what is it? You know, ge it's geog. It's, 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 I want to say geometry. I don't even know what it is. It's geometry, geography. I once wrote that my face, the geography of my face has changed, and all the lines that had once become had been streams and now become rivers. And it's true. Look at this. This is a glacier heading right down to my dick as we speak. <laughs> you can even hear. <laughs> <laughs> See, I like saying what I've never said before too. And we'll never say again. <laughs> okay. Do you have another one? <laughs> well, let's talk about light a little bit. Okay. You mentioned that. And perhaps the story of how you photographed Tilda would be a good illustration of the problem of finding the right kind of light. Well, it's interesting because some people came to do an uh, article with me. And, and the photo I knew I loved the photographer. The minute she got there, she, f she went to look the light. It's all about the light. And once I find my light, then I'm okay, and I hate, there's a coldness to art. I, but there's a style about artificial light which can be very beautiful too. I'm thinking uh, George Platt Lyons, write that down. Uh, you know how many people have never heard of George Platt Lyons? How many people here have never heard of George Platt Lyons? No, okay. Would you arrest these people? <laughs> Get them out of here, yeah. No, no, it's all about the quality of light, and you know, light can seduce you or bathe you or kiss you or hurt your face. And well, speaking about hurt faces, I've got this red eye, and I had a problem. My eyelids are so heavy. How big are your eyelids? They were they were drip. They were dangling down to my you know what downtown. And the thing is, I had this eye operated on. It was a big success, and then they took the stitches out, and now I have uh, a scratch on my cornea. Uh, so if I itch a lot, no, why did I tell you that? It's just that this, now I'm beginning to look like uh, Quasimodo without the quasi, I'm a quasi-Quasimodo. <laughs> That's funny, quasi-Quasimodo. Okay. See, thank you. Give that lady a prize. You can take any book you want here on me. Okay. okay. But, the, but when you oh, went yeah. to photograph her, yeah. the, the, the room oh, that yeah. you were in, in was not case, appropriate, right? In this case, uh, I'm certain, it's, yeah, I, I, there are certain people intimidate me, you know, and uh, Magritte intimidated me. Robert Frank always intimidates me. And um, so when I went to photograph her, I was very excited because I think she's really, I think she's our Garbo. She is the new Garbo. And so when I, she was late and we did a lot of kissing and then we had sex. No, no, that's somebody else. But then we, <laughs> in my dreams. But then we, then we went up to the room and the light was terrible. It was just bad light. And I mentioned that, and she got us a suite up on the top floor. This is all available light, but you have to know what you're looking for. And so I did a little, that's just window light. And uh, we did a little sequence where uh, we brought these seven veils. No, anyway, that's another idea. I like pictures that have ideas, not just people. It's amazing to me, but you look at something, oh, I'll tell you what lies all the time, portraits. If I showed you a picture of my mother, my father, and my brother, there's one in there, and you know, and uh, th that's when they were older, and th they would be smiling, you know, and ha you know they hadn't fucked in 50 years. They didn't even <laughs> like each other, and yet it's this kind of thing. That stand and stare, lies, 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 and there lies a tale. Okay, there a tale lies. Okay, okay ask me another one. Okay. <laughs> well, <it> was, <laughs> there's um, there's a wonderful photograph of your mother in there. Yes. Yeah. This was after she murdered my father by very slowly putting arsenic in his Iron City Pilsners. <laughs> this, is, this is called Mother, 
after father died. And she's look, she was looking out the I put her by the window because I love the reflection. But she had this very sad look. And then she was like she was tapping her fingers. You could almost count the moments, you know, one, three billion, five hundred, one, three billion, six hundred. Yeah. yeah, I like a picture like that. So um, it's but, hard to do. But what's interesting about your description of it, and I, I make a point here that Duane writes everything in his books. This is pretty unusual. You know, photography books generally have an introduction by someone very, you know, eminent and so on and so forth. This does not happen in a Duane book. He writes them all. But this description is interesting because it's so unsentimental. It's, you know, what you're saying in effect is like, we can't know what's going through your mother's mind as she's doing this. This is not yeah. revealing. No. It's face it, the face as fact, as you title it. Yeah. Am I supposed to say something? <laughs> no. Oh, I want to show you <laughs> the most important picture ever taken in the entire history of Duane's universe. And you all have one in your wallet. Just don't sit on it. But this is, this is a picture, an ordinary snapshot of my dear Fred who died. And this is the most important picture ever taken in the history of photography, more important than any. And you have somebody in your wallet that you're sitting on right now who is the most important. And this is all that counts. The person you love, all, the rest is bullshit. And you know what? Uh, uh, I discovered, that, uh, you want to hear my definition of love? Love is when another person's welfare is more important to you than your own. And that's why Donald Trump will never love anyone, because it's not ever possible that there will be somebody whose welfare is more important to him and than his own. Anyway, but I just want to tell you, photography is not about you know the, the big fat picture, pic, picture, picture books, but it's really about. There's a couple of pictures of Fred, but it's it's really about the person you love, and that cannot. That's it. That's it. Yeah. It's about touching. And about who want to be touched. <laughs> I'm touched. You ever use that in Pennsylvania? We say he's touched in the head. Have you ever heard of that? You never heard of that. Oh. You're touched in the head. <laughs> You're touched in the good head. Never mind. Dwayne, I'd like you to talk a little bit about. <laughs> well, that didn't go anywhere. <laughs> but I'm home. Okay. Yeah, then what happened? <laughs> Do you know how hard this is? <laughs> <laughs> how hard is it? <laughs> okay, that's it. Tell me to stop. I'd like you to talk a little bit about how you slid into this photographing business in the early 1960s and, and how you came to be this go-to person, especially when an art director or whoever had, a, had as a subject a photo a, um, an artist, a director, an actor, and so on. How did this happen? How did well, how you? How did it happen? Uh, I was born in a trunk. <laughs> no, no. But uh, no, uh, I had an aesthetic itch. Oh, yes, excuse me. I'm intimidated. I have an aesthetic itch. I just didn't know where to scratch. You know, Mozart was writing music when he was eight and concert and what, everything. You know the story. And uh, Erdo, was a Hungarian mathematician, was doing Fibonacci numbers uh, when he was 12. People, Mickey Mantle was hitting balls out of the park when he was about, uh, well, how old was he? I just got distracted. When he was about Mickey Mantle, ten, and so people have certain inclinations, and I had an aesthetic itch, and I took drawing classes in high school. Although the only book we had in our house was a phone book, and it was from a town, not even McKeesport, it was from Dravosburg. <laughs> so, but <laughs> misinformation. But <laughs> anyway, I I wanted to do something in the arts. I didn't know what it was. I had never gone to photography school, but uh, there's a wonderful quote from Boss Curley, of Boston, Mayor Curley, and they asked him about his career. What happened? He said, I seen me chances and I took them. Well, I seen me chances and I took them. I always, I always, I always say, I ask questions, I shoot and then I ask questions. I, I love, I love uh, doing what I've never done before. People usually feel very comfortable in their comfort zone. You know, I don't, I love 
the challenge. I love what the, I know what the, what the fuck is this? Yeah, I gotta figure it out. And it's really, and I still keep doing like, like what the fuck did we do today? Did I say the F word? Yeah. <laughs> we did a very interesting picture today, which I've never done before. Anyway, I never went to photography school. And when I went, I was working at Time Inc. as a graphic designer. I was a minor graphic designer. <laughs> I had a big light up here. <laughs> Never mind. You know what I do? This I have to ask you a question. How does your mind work? No, I asked myself that question years ago, and here's how my mind works. I hear two and three simultaneous sentences. Is that schizophrenic or something? No, but when somebody said to me, like, ah, I'm a little horse. I think of Princess Margaret. I think of Sea Biscuit. You know, I think of Churchill Down. So I always hear all these spin-off stories. And I really think that part of that is, and I, I, I keep spinning all the time, but really, so how does your mind work? When, when you hear a sentence, what do you really hear? The one sentence? Do you hear the variations of the sentence? You know, uh, anyway, I think it's very curious. I find everything very, very interesting. So I became a photographer. I was going to Russia. I found out you could go. And it cost, I don't, I'm not going to do the whole story, but I thought, well, I'm going. I should take a camera. And, you know, and I, and I learned how to say in Russian, Mojino Photographia T. And these people would let me, it's something I would never do in New York. And there was a certain kind of Russian chutzpah that I suddenly developed. And, uh, and, and luckily, I knew nothing about photography. You see, the trouble with going to schools is they teach you, what are they, what are they going to teach you? They're going to teach you rules. And then you have to unlearn all the rules. Look, I wasn't Diane Arbus. I wasn't Ansel Adams. Oh, I had a funny, I'm not going to say it's really dirty. But, uh, uh, but you know, I'm not. And so why should my photographs look like their photographs? You know, it's ridiculous. The journey is to find out who in the hell are you? Who, who's talking right now? You know, you know, I had a preemptive. When you get, I'm 86. Or is it 86? And when you get 86, you have bladder problems. So you're all going to be 86 if you're lucky one of these days. I, had, I took a preemptive piss before I came here because I had some water. If I suddenly get up and run out of here, nothing personal. Anyway, that's not funny. I found it vaguely amusing, and that's enough for me to even say it. See, I love hearing what I've never heard before. No, by accident. I became a photographer by accident. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I, I, truth be known, I am an accident. Ooh. Now, how many of you are not accidents? <laughs> okay. You would be surprised how many Catholics are accidents. Anyway, what are you going to say? Well, you know, and we were talking about your, your method and how, uh, how you go about finding these pictures and go about creating a situation where you can be surprised. And Josiah mentioned the, um, the uh, Meryl Streep picture from uh, 19... 1975. Yeah. Um, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about how this was done. Meryl who? Oh, no. No, no, it was very funny. I got, I had this assignment to go photograph Meryl what? Marijuana. <laughs> That's her family's real name. <laughs> That's funny, marijuana. Never mind. Uh, and so, is that Meryl? No. No, so we went, I didn't know who she was. She was very cute and really sweet. And we went up to Times Square and just ran around like that taking pictures, and that was, and then she invited me to her house, she had a little apartment down on Broadway, and she baked a cake, and, I mean, already, and we had coffee and cake in Merrill Street, so fast forward 100 years later, and I'm getting an award, and she's also getting the award, and I, I'm always, I don't like to, yes, I do, no, I don't, but I sold for credit, I sold for cash, no, so what I did was, you know, it's on the street. And she remembered the evening. She remembered going back to her. She was so sweet. And she remembered loaning me 10 bucks, and she asked for it back <laughs> with interest. <laughs> I owed her $5,000 for some reason. I don't know why. Anyway, I made that up. <laughs> I make up everything. <laughs> I like my makeup. <laughs> See, I did it again. Makeup, spin off. OK. You know, you're never going to have an opportunity to share a room with me like this. Uh, again, so you must ask me questions. You're going to pick up the paper, maybe, hopefully, I think I'd like to make it to the 90. And you pick up the paper and say, oh, guess who dwined? Who, who dwined? No, Dwayne dwined. He dwined. He's dead. Not Dwayne. Dead. What a loss. What a tragedy. I was there that night. And he said, ask questions. And I was afraid to. Well, <laughs> I should have asked him. Now, this is that Jump night. in any time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
you wicked child, I'm drowning. Yes, dear. So how do you feel about sorry? How do you feel about just the idea of the three Watch what you say. I have a great watch. <laughs> no, no. I well, first of all, first of all, uh, I never was a decisive momenter because I was frankly you staring at my bald spot, you are, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. I was, I hate it. My, uh, no. There's something called now. Can we agree? This is now, right? No, it's not. This is actually now. No, 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 that's not now. And so you've heard a decisive moment. Actually, I'm doing something originally called the decisive moments, but I'm doing, now it's called the simultaneous moment where I'm photographing an event three different angles. So, like, you're looking at me, and I'm looking at you. We're sharing, like Rosh Hashanah, we're sharing a moment, and, and when you leave, oh, I know what you're going to say, but you, no, when you leave, we'll say, what was it like? Well, I know he bullshitted a lot, and he ran off at the mouth. I don't remember anything he said, but he was very cute, and he stared at me. He wanted me, <laughs> but that's, I, that's true. But anyway, um, I forgot what I was talking about, but it had to do with the now, uh, and uh, so I began to do sequences because I needed wiggle room. I talk a lot, and I have a very lively imagination, and I'm a storyteller, and I didn't, I didn't need the decisive moment. I want to know what happened the moment before and the moment after, so I simply stretched it, which seemed to be very logical, and that meant I had the freedom to do the spirit leaves the body where a guy gets up and walks away from his own body. I've done many things on the idea of death. You know, death comes to the old lady, which is my grandmother, and I... She had Alzheimer's, and I said, oh, stand up. And when she got up, she, I did a long time exposure, and she blurred into little, like, little particles, like her particles were flowing back, blowing up into nature again. That's pretty exciting stuff. So I, I liberated myself from the tyranny of looking for life because I realized I was life in all the wrong places. No, this is it. This, see, this, is, a, this is a 1932 model. This is my Dwayne suit. I'm sitting, see? Here's Dwayne dead. No, this is Dwayne dead. And this is Dwayne alive, dead. What happened? It's all about energy. It's all about energy. And so when you look at reality, to me, reality isn't just facades and faces and, you know, tits and ass, can we talk? No, but reality is really about the whole package. Photographers only photograph the, uh, here's reality, and then this is what photographers photograph. And what they photograph is prepackaged reality. Oh, yeah, I know that's Marilyn Monroe. I know that's blah, 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 blah. You know, but reality is my dreams, my nightmares, you know. How do you talk about that? Why do we only photograph what we can see? Because photographers will not photograph what they can't see. And that's the problem because the things you can see are much more interesting than the things you can see. And how do we do that? And so I have to invent... I had to invent a way of doing that. So I never know what I'm doing. But I could tell you, da 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 what's his name? Daryl Winograd, Danny, Danny Win <laughs> Gary Winograd. <laughs> you know, he'll go out every morning and, and photograph at anything that moves, you know, and that's photography. And when I had my first show with sequences, he said, what the hell is this? This isn't photography. No, that's not your photography. I hate when people tell me what I can do and what I can't do, you know. So each one of you is an individual category. Each one, Shelly knows things I know nothing about, and I don't want to know anything about them. But if she wanted to, she could tell us about it. So I believe the only true knowledge is direct experience. It's the difference between falling in love and reading 100 love stories. And so I can only talk. I know what it feels like to be an 86-year-old bald gay guy with a red eye. Have you ever taken the red eye? Never mind. <laughs> okay, where were we, doctor? Yes, well, <laughs> well, it just so happens that, that uh, the next uh, shot, we have a nice little opening sequence, and Dwayne has photographed Andy Warhol frequently. Often. He did photograph, but he doesn't photograph him anymore. I did, but I don't anymore. But you don't anymore. Yeah, no. But you, you played with his image in really interesting, in really interesting ways, sort of making him fade away, taking him out of focus. It, and you also yeah. do a terrific impression of him. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Here's a phone call from Andy Warhol. 
ring, 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 hello. Uh, uh, uh. It was, talking to Andy was like talking to a phone off the hook. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, hi, Dwayne, you're fabulous. Uh, uh, uh. Hi, Andy, what's new? Uh, uh, uh. You're fabulous, Dwayne, you're fabulous. <laughs> no, but that's, I mean, really. <laughs> the legend. Yeah. Anyway, no, I like blurring him out of focus because when I felt when you got there, there's no there there. Thank you, Gertrude. But when you, you know, you know, the, no there there? You don't know it? Okay. Gertrude Stein famously said, when you get to Oakland, California, there's no there there. That's good. Okay. Write that down. You're going to forget. <laughs> okay. Hit me. <laughs> okay, but there are also characters who are playing roles here, yeah. and that that's very it's really interesting the way you would focus on the the persona, and uh, if I can grab this, um, George Balanchine uh, dressed as Jill, and twelve years earlier Balanchine with his with his dancers photographed him multiple exposures. Yeah. I love to do multiple exposures because it contradicts reality. P you see, people, the most beautiful Dutch Trump Lloyd painting, I always look for the drops of water in the insects. But you know, it's a two-dimensional two painting. But the great thing is with the photographs, people believe photographs. And photographers tell me what I already know. I know what snow looks like. I know what tits look like. I know what cars look like. Tell me what I don't know. That's the gift to me. It's not that I'm telling you what you already know. That's regurgitating reality. But when you get, go into that area where you don't know what the hell's going on anymore, and you know, that uncomfortable zone, that's where creativity is. It's always in that area where f you feel less when you're doing what out of your comfort zone. You have to get out of your comfort zone and uh, all ye abandon hope who enters here. That's the idea. Well, I was just thinking about uh, the, the, the picture, I think one of, one of your greatest pictures. Um, it's called A Letter from My Father. But as with so many of Dwayne's works, the text accompanying the picture is really as, not as important as, but is really an integral part of yeah. the picture. For, uh, uh, Text always goes with photographs. Every time you open a newspaper, there'll be a picture of President Trump walks up a flight of steps into Air Force One under a big umbrella while his child and wife walk behind him in the rain. And you look, oh, there, there goes that schmuck. He's, you know, I mean, you know, Dr. Schmuck. Anyway, so they captions tell you what you're looking at. I write under photographs because... I, with the frustration of the photograph. There was a, I, I don't like Renica Dijkstra, I'm very opinionated. I don't like Renica Dijkstra because she does stand and stare, but she did these pictures of Israeli soldiers and they looked like a bunch of pimply 18 year old kids who if a gun went off would, you know, faint. But that's not important. If they could have been any army, I don't know who in the hell they were, but what I wanted to know was what do they think of Palestinians? What do they think of Hasidim's, you know, not sending anybody, to, you know, what, what's going on in an Israeli 18-year-old kid's head other than sex? Everybody's interested in sex. 18 and 81, I can guarantee it. But the question is, how do, I, how do you get around that? So I simply do not believe in the purity of a photograph, and I began to augment the photograph with text. But the text doesn't tell you what you're looking at. I didn't say, this is a picture of my mother and my father and my brother when he was 20 and I lived on Charles Street, blah, blah, blah. No, I talk about what you cannot see. And I wrote a letter from my father. When I was 17, I, I left, they asked me to leave, actually, McKeesport. I went to Colorado. And my dad said to me, I'm going to write you a, special, a letter, I'm, something I want to tell you. And it became a big joke. And then when he retired and went from being an amateur drinker to a professional, I kept saying to him, well, when are you going to tell me that, you know, what, what, you know I'm going to tell you. You know, of course he never did. So when, I, when he died, the dam burst and I wrote all these things. And it was, it's, it's not trying to be a writer. You don't try to be a photographer. You don't try to be a writer. You just follow your instincts and you write. There's no question about, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's like that. Yeah. So in the in the book, Dwayne, you you outline four kinds of photography. That uh, it's a kind of uh, a playful yeah. dissection of what photog portrait photography can be. But photography is never portraiture is never it's assumed. Nobody ever questions the nature of a portrait. Uh, my favorite portraits have to do with porn. A lot of stormy weather. Uh, <laughs> There's a whole string of, I can't think of them, but it could be funny if I really worked at it, but I don't have the time. Uh, okay, my first 
standard picture is stand and stare. That's when everybody does. You know, where you, you know, it's the people, our relatives in the garden in the summertime from Chicago, and my mother would say, "Oh, Margaret, you know, no, Mar Mar Jack, Jack, you know, okay, everybody, you know, that's stand and stare." And I understand that, and that's what we all do, and that's what I do. The second kind I call the prose portrait, where the photograph tells a story about somebody. And there's a picture I did here of uh, what's his name? <clears throat> the, that guy, Richards, Richard, Michael Richards. Mm -hmm. He used to be Kramer, and he's pouring. He's reading a book. He's pouring a, gl a glass of milk. He's got him, but he's pouring the milk all over the table. Now a traditional picture would be, you know, him doing this. But I, this is what he does. That's his shtick. All the pictures that I did with uh, Magritte were prose portraits because they were done in the manner of Magritte, and it's very hard to under. And when I photographed Baltus with his wife Setsuko, I took my little hand mirror, and. He had been photographing for years young girls looking at themselves in the mirror, and I had his wife hold the portrait so he could look at himself in her mirror. And that whole relationship of mirrors and, but you have to understand something about who the artist is and what, what his vocabulary was. So I always loved doing that sort of thing. And uh, let's, oh, the other one was called Imaginary Portrait, where I did an imaginary portrait of Marlene Dietrich as one of the Demoiselles d'Avignon. And I had this picture of her, like a glamour picture. Then I painted Picasso's uh, monster face on top of her, which I thought was funny. If it's funny, it's OK. That's my bottom line. <laughs> no, funny is very important. If you don't have a sense of humor, you're dead. You don't even know you're not dead. <laughs> and believe me, in this, in this universe, you have to have a sense of humor, really. Otherwise, it's the, you know why? Because the joke's on us. <laughs> it really is. Oh, there's another one. Imaginary prose, Josiah. Imaginary prose, that annotated. Oh, an annotated is, is the one where I wrote, I wrote on the photograph about my parents. You know, uh, this letter, this is the letter I never got. And uh, you couldn't, you knew nothing about that. And I'm not a purist at all. I, I will break every law in the book, you know, and... Uh, I wrote a very good, good thing about being gay. It said the unfortunate man. I don't know if you've ever seen it. And the guy is nude and he's got shoes on his hands and he's walking up the wall. And it said, the unfortunate man could not touch the one he loved. It had been declared illegal by the law. Slowly his fingers became toes and his hands became feet. And he began to wear shoes to, sh to hide his shame. It never occurred to him to break the law. So see, everything is subject for photography. I would never do a Maplethorpe series of self-ports with whip up my ass. Uh, there's a thought. But uh, <laughs> don't get excited. <laughs> I, I lodged that thought in your mind. Admit it. Now you're going to think about it. <laughs> I got it out of here. No, but, you know, it's the most important things are that sentence. You can show me 100 pictures of Maplethorpe took a big dick, Sir Rick. That's, that's anatomy. It doesn't mean anything until the photographer brings insight into what he's, what he's photographing. Not regurgitating uh, the cliches of the subject, but, you know, oh, look, a portrait of Marilyn Monroe. Oh, wow, that's genius. Marilyn Monroe, wow, where'd you get that one? No, I'm very opinionated, I should warn you. Okay. <laughs> Ask um, me a hard one. <laughs> There's another, and I'll, I'm not going to say it. Go ahead. Well, I... Since I'm here, I can share what I've always thought is my favorite picture by you, which is your portrait of Joseph Cornell in 1972. I think you all know this picture, Cornell. Well, if you don't, you should. <laughs> but I wonder if you could uh, talk a little bit about how you came to know Joseph and what, well, what it was like to photograph. Knows, no, no, you don't know Joseph. You experience him. Write that down. You don't know Dwayne. You experience him. Good. No, but it's, it's absolutely true. He was a wizard. He was freaky. He was that kid in high school that nobody would talk to and bullies would knock down a flight of steps. He was a fairy, not in a gay sense, but in, in the fragile sense. He, he faked French. He didn't speak French, but he loved to use French references. He would haunt all these bookstores along here and find strange things. He would fall in love with like really cheap tarts. And I'm not talking about cherry tarts. I'm, yeah, I am talking about cherry tarts on Broadway and uptown. And he would give them his work. Totally amazing. And 
sometimes they would come to his house and steal things. And when you got to work with him, I was, he was one of those people I was always in awe. And we had a code. I would never say, oh, hey, Joe, do you mind if I take a picture of this fucking box of yours? It looks old. No, you, I would say to him, oh, look at that. Don't you think that's interesting? And he said, no, I don't think it's interesting. That meant don't, you know, you know I'll tickle you to death with my feather. But, uh, oh, he almost caught on fire. Uh, we were, <laughs> when he had in his house on Utopia Parkway, how good is that? And he had in the kitchen an old stove, like a gas stove from the Depression. And when you turn the gas on, the flame of, you know, and he always liked to make tea. And he would put this kettle on, and he used to wear, do you know what Angora is? It's a very fluffy, kind of feathery cotton. And he wore it, looked like a lady's Angora sweater, I never asked. And he, in the winter, he wore it, the house was always cold, and he had this Angora sweater, and he would be talking and putting on the tea, and I, I thought, be at the radio, I want to get a flaming uh, Joseph Cornell. Now that's a picture, <laughs> you know. Then I thought, well, I could set him on fire if I really wanted to, you know, but I didn't do it. But anyway, I love that. It's that kind of whimsy. It's that kind of not knowing what you're doing. I can bet that uh, any number of photographers, well-known photographers, will go and they know exactly what the picture is going to be before they even get there. You know, and it's not what it's about. It's making. It's like the way one makes life up as we go along. The way I'm making up my sentences, and it's also the way work should be. You should make work up as you go along. I have no idea what I'll be doing. We did something today which was really marvelous. We're doing a new project, and here's what it is. And if I mentioned it, an event occurs and we photograph it from three different angles. So in this one, two guys are beginning to make out, and it's called interrupt us. And in walks one of the guy's wife, and then this whole event that occurs. And it's really quite interesting to put it together. And see, I've never done that before. And if you copy this, you heard it here first. Just remember that. No, but see, that's what I mean. Everything is subject for photography. You know. It's, anyway. And I have to share with them maybe the most stunning multiple exposure portraits you did, which is a session with Barbara Streisand. Which we almost put on the cover. <laughs> no, 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 never put her on the cover. No, but uh, I, on seven, I live on 19th Street, and on 17th Street, I used to use Danny Enton's studio, and I had this, she was in her very first musical, What's that? No, her very first play. I can get it for you, wholesale or something like that. What is it? Something like that. What was it? Funny girl? No, no, pre funny girl. Yeah, it was. She was still marinating. But uh, <laughs> she, she came to the studio. I had no idea who in the hell she was. She was about nineteen. She came to the studio with like three shop. I thought she was a man in drag. All these shopping bags full of ladies' clothes, and she, and I didn't take her seriously. So I, I love doing double and triple exposures, always. You know, I learned how to do that by accident. I had a cheap, when I went to Russia, I had a $13 camera, the Argus C3, and it gratuitously double exposed, and I didn't realize that. And then I thought, well, these, the double exposure are really interesting. So I began to experiment with that. And with her, uh, it was interesting because I thought, well, she's wacky enough, she'll do anything. And so we just began, and I double and triples with her. And I think that's the first time they've ever been published, but it was a lot of fun. And then she invited, she, I, I said, I, I never heard you sing. So she was going to be on Gary Moore, and she said, well, why don't you come up to my agent, I don't know who, the, who it was. I met her in this office building, and she had them run a little tape for me of her. She sang uh, Happy Days Are Here Again, and I thought, oh, shit, that's great. And I said, Barbara, if I could buy stock, I'd buy stock in you, you know. <laughs> and she took no stock of me. But anyway, that didn't go anywhere, did it? Yeah. <laughs> It's not for trying. Okay. The other thing that we see a lot of in this book is people being very eloquent with their hands. Oh. So they communicating. Oh, That's you always take things the wrong way. I take them the right way. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a terrific picture of Carol Burnett. Yeah. yeah. She has these freaky, I, I think I call them freaky fingers. But they would go backwards like that, you know. You can't take me anywhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, thank you all very much for coming out tonight. <laughs>